Hello everyone. In this session, I will demonstrate you the various foramina in the skull. These foramina are seen from the interior of the cranial cavity and also from the basal view of the skull that is the norma basalis. The interior of the cranial cavity is divided into three fossa. This is the anterior cranial fossa. This is the middle cranial fossa and this is the posterior cranial fossa. In the anterior cranial fossa, in the median plane anteriorly, we see a small foramen. This is the foramen cecum. The foramen cecum is usually a blind foramen, but sometimes if it is patent, it transmits a vein from the nose to the superior sagittal sinus. Just behind it, this is the cribriform plate of ethmoid. This is the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone in which we can see numerous foramina which are known as olfactory foramina. The olfactory foramina of each side will transmit about 15 to 20 filaments of olfactory nerve. So that is the olfactory nerve or first cranial nerve. This is the optic canal behind. The optic canal transmits optic nerve, which is the second cranial nerve, and ophthalmic artery. We can see the optic canal in the orbit also. This is the optic canal. The optic nerve is the second cranial nerve, which passes through the optic canal or optic foramen. This is the superior orbital fissure which also can be seen from the orbit. So this is the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure transmits frontal nerve, lacrimal nerve, trochlear nerve, superior ophthalmic vein, the two divisions of oculomotor nerve, nasociliary nerve, abducent nerve, and inferior ophthalmic vein. Just below and behind this superior orbital fissure, this is the foramen rotundum. The foramen rotundum transmits maxillary nerve. Behind it, there is an oval shaped foramen. This is the foramen oval. The foramen oval transmits mandibular nerve, accessory meningeal artery, lesser petrosal nerve and emissary vein. We can also see the, men, the foramen oval from the base. This is the foramen oval. Behind foramen oval, there is foramen spinosum. This is foramen spinosum, which can also be seen from the base. This is foramen spinosum. The foramen spinosum transmits middle meningeal artery, middle meningeal vein and meningeal branch of mandibular nerve. The meningeal branch of mandibular nerve is also known as nervous spinosus as it is passing through foramen spinosum. Medially there is an irregular foramen this foramen is known as foramen lacerum. This is foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum transmits meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and emissary vein. But in the upper part of foramen lacerum, the greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve unite to form the nerve of pterygoid canal which passes anteriorly into the pterygoid canal and then into the pterygopalatine fossa. Also, the upper part of the foramen lacerum is traversed by internal carotid artery and the sympathetic plexus around the internal carotid artery. In the posterior cranial fossa here we can see this is the internal acoustic meatus. 
or internal auditory meatus which gives passage to facial nerve, vestibular cochlear nerve and labyrinthine vessels. The facial nerve is the seventh cranial nerve which enters the middle ear by the internal acoustic meatus along with the vestibular cochlear nerve. Just below it there is a foramen. This is the jugular foramen. The jugular foramen can be seen from the basal view also. This is the jugular foramen. The jugular foramen transmits glossopharyngeal nerve which is ninth cranial nerve, vagus nerve that is the tenth cranial nerve, accessory nerve that is the eleventh cranial nerve, the inferior petrosal sinus which is occupying this fissure this is the petrooccipital fissure this fissure petrooccipital fissure is occupied by inferior petrosal sinus which is also passing via the jugular foramen and opening in the internal jugular vein also the sigmoid sinus which is located here in the sigmoid sulcus it is coming towards the jugular foramen here and it becomes an internal jugular vein at jugular foramen. Also passing through this foramen are meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and meningeal branch of occipital artery. Next this is the hypoglossal canal. This is the hypoglossal canal which can also be seen from the basal view here this is the hypoglossal canal or anterior condylar canal which transmits hypoglossal nerve and meningeal branch of hypoglossal nerve this is the foramen magnum it is the largest foramen in the skull the foramen magnum transmits spinal accessory nerve, vertebral arteries, posterior spinal arteries, anterior spinal artery. Here the medulla oblongata becomes the spinal cord which goes down. The meninges covering the spinal cord also pass through it. And other structures passing through it are apical ligament of dense, membrana tectoria, and cruciate ligament. We can also see from the basal view of the skull there is a canal. This is the carotid canal. This is the carotid canal through which passes internal carotid artery and sympathetic plexus around the internal carotid artery. As I had mentioned earlier, the internal carotid artery after passing through the carotid canal which is present in the petrous temporal bone, it traverses the foramen lacerum which is present just anteriorly. This is foramen lacerum. So it traverses the upper part of foramen lacerum and enters the middle cranial fossa. From here it enters the cavernous sinus which is present on the side of the body of sphenoid bone. So that is the short course of the internal carotid artery. On the basal view of the skull we can see some other foramina. Now this is the hard palate in which we can see anteriorly here this is the incisive fossa in which there are incisive foramina through which the terminal part of the greater palatine vessel pass also, the nasopalatine nerve comes out from this foramen. Posteriorly, here, this is the greater palatine foramen from which emerges the greater palatine vessels and nerve. And behind, there are smaller multiple foramina, laser palatine foramina, through which passes laser palatine nerves and vessels. So, this is greater palatine foramen. And behind it, there are laser palatine foramina. We also saw from the interior, this is foramen oval. 
behind it this is foramen spinosum then we also saw the foramen lacerum medially behind which this is the carotid canal medially here is the jugular foramen this is the jugular foramen this is the foramen magnum this is the hypoglossal canal or anterior condylar canal behind the condyle there will be posterior condylar canal or fossa there is one more important foramen here situated between styloid process and mastoid process so this foramen is known as stylomastoid foramen this is the stylomastoid foramen through which the facial nerve comes out from the facial canal present in the middle here so the facial nerve comes out and enters the parotid gland there are some important foramen in the orbit two of which i had already demonstrated this is the optic canal so this is the optic canal and this is the superior orbital fissure this is the superior orbital fissure this fissure is the inferior orbital fissure the inferior orbital fissure transmits the zygomatic nerve infraorbital nerve and vessels the infraorbital nerve and vessels then pass through the infraorbital groove which is present along the floor of the orbit and infraorbital canal and eventually the infraorbital nerve and vessels will come out via this foramen and this is infraorbital foramen present along the upper margin of the orbit that is a supraorbital foramen or notch in this case there is a notch on both the sides but this may be converted into foramen then it is known as supraorbital foramen which transmits supraorbital nerve and vessels so these are the main foramina in the skull and the structures passing through these foramina thank you